welcome back to the channel. I know I ain't recording a while, but that's because I was uh I had a nerve in my mouth and my like my jaw been acting up ever since it's been acting up for like the past four fat days. That's still no excuse, but that's besides the point. I'm a whole different person when I'm in pain. And I'd rather not just take that out on my on my uh on my YouTube channel. But this will be what if Goku joined the Freezer Force. And without further ado, let's get right into it. First, we, uh, we're going to start this off like literally at the very beginning. So if you watch that video that I posted, like the last video that I posted, we're kind of piggybacking off that uh, a little bit more detail. So Frieza goes to Planet Vegeta because obviously he's going to assume control, which obviously means every Saiyan that is outside of the planet has to come back, including Burdock and his team. When Burdock and his team get this message, they're obviously, you know, a little thrown off because King Cold, as far as they were aware, you know, they were, they were doing pretty decent. So they just, you know, assumed that maybe, you know, he wouldn't just hand them over to their tyrannical ruler, his tyrannical ruler of a son. So when they get back to the planet, um, they come to find out Frieza is doing a recruitment thing for the Saiyans, like gathering up respected Saiyans. And one of his, uh, like, crew members, like, joke, jokingly state, like, what if they come and grab you? And Burnock, you know, he basically tells him, like, I would rather die than go with them. And then Frieza, like, Frieza, like, just out of, like, out of nowhere, you just hear Frieza's voice, like, well, that was rather rude. You know, for your new ruler, and like Burdock turns around, and when he turns around, he sees Frieza. Now everybody in the like general area kind of just froze because Frieza is drastically stronger than Burdock, and majority of everyone on the planet. So like, well, everyone on the planet. So like when he turns around, he's like, oh, you know, and Frieza's like, that's interesting. You know, you don't shut her up when people when I uh when I you know when I dress myself, and like Burdock tells him like, well, we all gotta die someday, and like that kind of throw Frieza back, and Frieza's like, okay. You, you coming with us we we was coming to get you anyway but you coming with us and burdock was like for what and he's like for the elite saiyans of course like you're the only other saiyan probably besides a few others that are actually going to be able to just leave the planet like you're going to be treated like actual saiyans so like frieza soldiers like frieza elite soldiers instead of just saiyans and like burdock like as they're like flying away like this is him explaining it as they're flying away so like, as he's explaining this to Burdock, Burdock kind of stopped me there. He's like, I don't want to be treated, like, differently from any other saying. Like, <laughs> that's not it. And Frieza was like, you don't, you don't get it. You don't have that option. You're coming with me. This is, this, is, this is an attempt for me to understand and possibly try not to destroy your planet. That's not what he said, but, you know, that's, that was implied. You know, because Frieza didn't necessarily like them anyway. So, you know, he's trying to hold back his angrily intentions of telling him, I can just blow your shit up, right? So yeah, that's what they're doing, arguing as they're on the way back to the ship. And as they get closer to the ship, Frieza like turns around and tells me, shut the fuck up because my dad's right there, right? And Burdock was like, well, at this point, I mean, shit, I'm already here. And then like he Frieza, like he's like he grabs Frieza's shoulder and like all the other Saiyans see this and like Frieza turn around like he like he finna punch him. And Burdock was like, let me go see my like my family or whatever. And Frieza like pulls his shoulder off, was like, fuck it, go. But you better be back here. I catch you trying to run away and I'm killing everything. Your, your whole your whole little shindig raditz raditz he gonna go he gonna disappear right so burdock yo he he like he get mad and he fly off and he go tell guinea guinea upset obviously and like he like he goes and he sees goku's pot not goku but kakarot's pot or whatever like the little shits he's in and then he's go he go back to freeze and stuff and this was like way before i'm gonna just you know just like you know yeah this is like broly well obviously it's broly but it's besides the point so um we're gonna kind of fast forward, but I'm gonna tell you what happens in between that time. So, Burdock does get drastically stronger than what he was in canon. Also, he also gains some type of respect for Frieza, along with Frieza gaining respect for him due to like, you know, them just being around each other a lot. Now, that's not to say that Frieza don't like Saiyans. Frieza still don't like Saiyans. He just has a little bit more respect for Burdock because Burdock is one of those uh, people that you can just rely on. He's a warrior, like an actual warrior. Burdock might not like working for Frieza, but Frieza is protecting his planet, quotation marks, by keeping them in his employment. So, technically speaking, it's a win-win. But when Burdock finds out um, that he has to destroy Planet Vegeta, um, he kind of like, like he tells, like he tells Frieza that he's going to fight him. Like without a shadow of a doubt, he's going to die with his planet. Now this does piss Frieza off, but like Burdock tells him, like, but the least you could do is keep keep my sons out of it. Like, if anything, if they manage to survive, just take him in. You ain't gotta tell him why. You ain't gotta like him. Just take him in, right? And Frieza, you know, for respect for one of his like more higher ranking Saiyans, like Burdock's moved up in the ranks. He's a, at a, around the same level of Dodoria and Zarbon, 
in uh, not strength. He's over them in strength, but in rank, he's around the same. Right? So, anyway, yeah. They end up going back to Planet Vegeta. That whole fight and stuff end up planning out. Now, on this in this turn of events, Raditz gets pulled, like, um, the minute Vegeta and them find about find out about uh, Planet Vegeta's destruction, instead of them, like, having to make their way back, um, Frieza basically pulled up on them. So after he destroyed the planet, he, he let Goku's pod go. Like, he saw it. He let Goku's pod go. Um, and then he went to go get Raditz, Nappa, and Vegeta. So, yeah. But, like, when he went to go get Raditz, Nappa, and Vegeta, he can... And he, Nappa and Vegeta kind of instantly can tell the slight favoritism that Frieza's given to, like, to Raditz. But it's not, like, it's not drastic because he's a Saiyan. And technically speaking, Raditz is weak. So it's not like he's going to get much attention from Frieza anyway. Frieza's still going to attempt to get him up there. You know, he has a big boot to fill, Burdox. So, you know, that's basically what he's, like, thinking about it as. Like, one of his sons could be potentially better than him or him himself. Like, you know, they could be that guy. So that's his main intention, just trying to find a new Burdock to either, you know, help him lead his empire, you know, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, um, over the years, you already know what happens on Earth. I'm not going to specify it. I'm just going to fast forward to the point where uh, Raditz goes there. Because nothing really changes. The only difference is, is that, uh, uh, nothing really, actually. Um, yeah, Raditz is, like, drastically stronger when he goes to Earth. The only difference is, is that when he goes to Earth, it's not just him. It's Frieza too, right? So when they arrive on the planet, they arrive in a ship. So obviously everyone knows that they're there. You can kind of feel Frieza's presence. Vegeta and Nappa are still like, they're off on a completely different planet. Because once again, Nappa and, Rad uh, Nappa and Vegeta are not Frieza's main concern, clearly, right? So like Frieza tells Nappa, not Nappa, Frieza tells Raditz that he's going to have a set period in time to go find Goku or Kakarot. Y'all may refer to him as Goku, but y'all, y'all, they're gonna, I'm, I might switch it up every once in a while. Anyway, so, yeah, Raditz goes out, he tries to find him, and he finds, like, you know, a, de a, a decent amount of power levels on, like, this island, so he goes back and tells Frieza, and Frieza, like, pulls up the ship. Now, everybody could kind of tell that Frieza's on the planet. It's not hard, but, like, they were trying to, like, kind of ignore it, because, you know, they didn't want to alert Chi-Chi, none, none of them, and they weren't really, they didn't assume that it was going to immediately come for them, but, lo and behold, this big-ass ship floating above uh, Roshi's island. So, like, Frieza and Raditz come down, and Raditz, you know, He's like, hey, you know, you're my brother. You know, that's that conversation ensues. But Frieza is in his head mad because the Saiyans are procreating. Now, given he doesn't care, like, OK, because, you know, he's still got to take in, you know, Goku and Raditz. You know, he made that uh, warrior's promise to Burdock. But he also told, you know, somebody that he was going to get rid of, them, but they procreated. So instead of like, you know, just outright getting upset, he tells Goku, like, you know, hey, we could, you know, come join me and, you know, at first, Goku, you know, sensing sensing his energy, he really wasn't for it. Like he was like, "Nah, I'm fine." And you know, Frieza, like he get mad. He's now he upset because you know he can't just not take Goku. If, you know, because you know if somebody else find out, something's going like you know stuff could happen. He better off just keeping him under his watch so that way, at the bare minimum, he can't get extremely upset because the last remaining are with him, apparently, right? So yeah, like Frieza's kind of like he's just trying to convince Goku. And like at one point he he turned like he reverts like and like he tells Goku like if you don't just come with him he's going to you know just kind of kill everyone here, and Goku was like wait what like when did you just like weren't you just trying to get me to come with you suddenly like and like Frieza was like I'm I'm done I'm done with that this is not what I am I am a, a, a person that does not like to be told no so either you're coming with me or I'm blowing up your planet and Goku like he tries to like do something but like. Raditz, like, he just moves him out the way. He's like, tell him, trust, trust me, bro. You, you just, you better off just coming with us. Don't, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. And, like, Frieza was like, ah, some intensive. And he grabbed, like, he, like, he basically just disappears and grabs, uh, Chi Chi and, uh, Gohan and was like, here, um, come meet us. I'm pretty sure you can sense, you can, you can tell, you know, you can feel me. Come meet us, you know, over here in this field. And, you know, if you want to come with us, they, they can live. If, if you don't, they'll die. You'll die. And the planet will die with you. Right? So, <clears throat> Frieza, like, just flies up, like, flies back up into the ship. And Raditz, like, he's like, I tried, I tried to tell you. I tried to tell you. And at this point, like, this, like, um, Piccolo is finally arriving. So, at this point, like, they're spazzing. And Frieza sees a Namekian. She's like, he's like an Namekian on Earth. 
what 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 is what is going on here? Y'all got Saiyans, Namekians, uh, y'all just all just everywhere, huh? Right. So um yeah, that's basically what happens. They uh I'm gonna say like a few hours pass, they end up going to meet Frieza. Goku does end up agreeing to go with him, obviously, and he doesn't really have any other option. He's not strong enough to uh stop Frieza from really doing anything. But Frieza did and he did ask Frieza on the off chance, you know, that your empire is so big, keep in contact with Earth. You know, he 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 still want to be a part. And funnily enough, uh Frieza sees more Burdock and Goku than Raditz. So he kinda is more lenient on Goku than he is on Raditz. Which you kinda which you kinda would have saw in the like the beginning our uh talking, technically speaking, although I didn't say anything about it. Frieza was more negotiable with Goku than he was with Raditz. With Raditz he just came and grabbed him. But that's because Raditz already in the force. That's besides the point. Anyway, back to the story. So, um, yeah, Frieza basically agrees to just like envelop Earth inside of its uh, inside of its sphere of influence without necessarily enveloping Earth, like turning it into a military, you know. And technically speaking, uh, Boma's technology is could be relatively useful. That capsule thing they got going on. Anyway, so yeah, um, Frieza takes Goku uh, and Raditz over to a planet with some high intense gravity, and that's basically what they're doing. For the next few years, they're training and training and training. At this point in time, though, um, Frieza clearly cannot keep training with them because Frieza, as we all know, gets drastically stronger when she when he trains. I keep saying trying to say she when he trains. So there's not really like after a certain point in time. So around like the Namek arc, Frieza would stop training with them because, as we all know, well, I already said that. Um, yeah. So like. Frieza stopped training with them, and then after a while, Frieza, like, kind of got mad because they weren't progressing. So, you know, he kind of just, like, blurs out, like, in just violent anger. Like, he destroys the moon next to them, and, like, Goku's like, whoa, what's going on? And Frieza, like, gets pissed, and he's like, y'all aren't getting stronger. And, like, Raditz is like, come on, not not this again. And, and like, Goku's like, what are you talking about, not this again? He's done this before? And Frieza, like, he powers up to, like, his perfect form, and Goku's like, oh, what, what is that? What is that? And he's like, you're like, and like he basically just starts going off about like how like his like how great their father was and all this other shit. And Goku was like, wait, you knew my you knew my actual dad? Like not not Gohan? Like they told me, you know, that's what they were kind of telling him. You know, he kind of knew he wasn't from Earth. You know, who, who the fuck from Earth has tails besides the actual furry animals on Earth? That's but uh, you know what the uh, Dragon Ball Z universe is confusing. He just kind of knew he wasn't from Earth. Obviously, he just got picked up by fucking aliens. That's besides the point, though. Anyway um like he kind of like powers up and he's like you know your your father would at least be able to stand some type of chance in this form you know y'all can barely even right and as he's like saying this he kind of just goes and like knocks with goku and like raditz away and like raditz was just like goku just try to defend yourself man <laughs> and like goku was like what do you mean and then like frieza just appears in front of him and punches him in the gut and he's like at the bare minimum he could take a punch right and then, like he throws them into like he throws them into a mountain and they're like oh my god like because at at this point the freezer ray like freezer's kind of like got a small little fleet around the planet you know just something slight to keep you know them not protected but supply you know it's freezer it's their leader of course that's besides yeah anyway so like everybody like on the ships kind of like just seeing the explosions and shit they're like oh my god like <laughs> should we go down there and stop them and like the Ginyu Force, like looking, I like, looking at it, and Captain Ginyu is like, I don't know, Dodoria. Do you, do you feel like you can go down there and stop that? I don't know. And like Zarbon, like he kind of chimes in, and he's like, he's really trying to find the next Burdock. Like, for real, he's trying to find it. Like, I think it's only gotten this bad because you know that other saying that he just picked up not too long ago looks so similar to Burdock, it's uncanny, right? And like Ginyu, like he smacks his head, and he's like, you fucking idiot. That's because that's his son. And like. You know that, that that that's basically the conversation in there, and like like Goku, like he kind of he kind of like it kind of clicks in his head. And he's like, so wait, like he gets up, and he's like, what did you do, like to my to my dad? And Frieza, like he kind of stops in the midst of his like little attack, not like like what not like what he do to his dad, but like what happened to his dad. And he like his Frieza like kind of stops mid for like mid attack, and Frieza tells him like he died in battle, you know, like any normal saying would. And Goku, like he, he like he tells him like I doubt that. And like Frieza, like he looks at him, he's like, "What do you mean you doubt that? Like you, you don't, you doubt your, your father was not worthy enough to die in battle?" And he's like, "No, I doubt it. As I doubt he was able to take a punch from you, and he just died to some random soldier in battle." And like 
this kind of like pisses Frieza off because in reality, all of the Frieza Force knows what happened, right? Uh, Goku hasn't had time to talk to uh, 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 Vegeta and Nappa yet. They literally have no idea Goku has been picked up yet, right? So like, Frieza, like he kind of just tells him like, yeah, you know, I, I, I killed him. Like, you know, fuck it, right? And at this point, Raditz kind of knew, like it was implied because technically speaking, he, hang, he hung out more around Vegeta and Nappa than you know, once again, they're not strong enough to do anything. But with the way everything has been going, with the kidnapping of, uh, you know, the, obviously that happened a while back, but that still stirred up some type of genuine emotion inside of Goku. And, you know, given the events now, he's currently getting the shit beat out of him. That's besides the point. Yeah, so, you know, after he kind of realizes, like, you know, Frieza's kind of the reason why he doesn't really know his actual fucking family and why he, you know, got sent off to another planet, he doesn't, he literally will have really no real idea of what his parents would have actually been like and you know this kind of eh, it kind of makes goku little you know, he goes super saiyan like he starts flickering in and out of super saiyan right and at first this kind of like scares frieza because oh shit like he's actually matching his power but then it excites him like oh shit oh shit i just helped him unlock something that could be so beneficial to everyone that like is taking part in my stuff so far like the frieza force can excel and like at this point, he's not trying to fight to kill Goku. He's just trying to make it to where he can stay inside that form. So while Goku is fighting in blind rage, Frieza is actively trying to just prevent him from killing him. Now, in the same breath, you're like, how is Frieza able to keep up with Super Saiyan Goku? It's because Frieza has been training Raditz since Rat since he went to go pick Raditz up. So realistically speaking, when Goku turns into Super Saiyan, he's not as strong as Frieza. He's at the bare minimum strong. Uh, final form freezer not full power final form freezer just final form freezer himself so they're literally just button heads and then at a time like after a while goku kind of like calmed down because you know goku's still goku he's level-headed right and at some point he sees like the the like he sees the not this not like sadness or whatever but you know he eventually calms down enough to ask him like did he actually want to do it because you know the way that freezer would talk about burdock made it seem like he really did not want to kill him so like like or the like majority like he he can kind of tell he didn't like the Saiyans but Burdock it clearly was the general exception so like he like Goku he powers down and Frieza was like did like did you lose the power and Goku was like nah at least I don't think I did right and Frieza like he if he takes a deep breath and he's like you know I didn't didn't want to kill your father but it was either you know he wanted to die with his planet with his family I mean with you know not his family but you know with his race but you no, know, y'all are alive. And he kind of throws that joke in there. And Frieza, like Goku, not like laughing at the clearly maniacal joke he just made, but like smirking at the fact that at least he know that he didn't want to actually kill his dad. You know, like he wasn't trying to strip Goku's shit away from him. He just got told by somebody. So at this point, Goku thinks, so it gotta be King Cold. Like King Cold is clearly stronger and you know, pulls more of the power. So Goku, you know, he kind of, picks Raditz up like he goes to pick Raditz up and at this point Raditz is like foaming at the mouth not foaming at the mouth but got his like mouth wide open because you know Goku just transformed into the legendary Super Saiyan and now um you know chatter amongst the Saiyan not uh Saiyan radios but Frieza uh Frieza like radios uh frequencies kind of like bounce over to Vegeta and, and apparently the legendary Super Saiyan has awoken and it's apparently just some low level Saiyan so Burdock not Burdock uh Vegeta kind of like he gets upset like how there's no there's no possible way and they like he fought frieza at full power like close there's there's no way and you know their for like his at first reaction he thought raditz there's no fucking way that loser got like that loser got past me you know and Nappa kind of chimes in he's like well he does have the training of frieza like he does have the backing of frieza and the entire frieza force on that side so technically speaking it wouldn't really be and, like before Nappa could finish his sentence like vegeta kind of just flies off and he's like well I guess that's that's it. We're going back to wherever, you know, we're going to Frieza's, you know. So, yeah, they're going to meet up with Frieza in them anyway. So, yeah, basically what's going on is Frieza and them are throwing, like, this major-ass party. And then, uh, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, so, um, yeah, they're throwing, like, this major-ass party because Frieza's excited. You know, he just helped somebody. He just helped Goku unlock the Super Saiyan form, which could lead to, you know, his people getting drastically stronger. But there's also that chance of his brat unlocking Super Saiyan, which could be a problem later on if his brat somehow sees him as a threat. Eh, that's besides the point, though. Um, anyway, so, like, they're eating and shit, and then Vegeta, like, he walks into the room, and he sees this other Saiyan that looks, you know, scarily similar to Bardock. So he walks over to, he walks over to Raditz, and Raditz and Vegeta hasn't necessarily had the most, um, 
decent friendship over the years. So it's more like, hey, you know, what's going on? And you know, Raditz just kind of tell him like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like we're eating. My my brother's here. You know, like and you know, they kind of throws him back like your brother. And like he goes to walk over to um, he goes to walk over to like Kakarot or Goku in this sense. And like for you, that like kind of just tells him like your your presence isn't needed here, Vegeta. You, you you could go out and you know destroy another planet or something. And like Goku kind of turns around and he's like, so this is this is another saying, and. Frieza was like, yeah, but he's not necessarily someone that you'll get to know. He's not near your level. And, like, this kind of pisses Vegeta off. And, you know, Vegeta kind of tells him, like, what? Like, I am. Like, there's no possible way that this dude, you know, because he, Goku knows how to suppress his energy. So, like, like using the scouter, he scouts him. He's like, there's no possible way that this dude is, like, stronger than me. And, you know, Goku was like, I could, I could prove it. You would, you, would you like for me to prove it? Like, you want to, you want to scrap and Frieza was like, like Frieza laughs, like laughs maniacally. Yes, let's let's see the Prince of All Saiyans fight against this low-ranking Saiyan. Yes, <laughs> yeah, you know, he's eating this up. Like, this this should be hysterical. And like, he's like, so where are we fighting at? And he's like, the the, the planet right below us. And like, Nappa was like, I don't know about this Vegeta. That 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 planet's gravity is pretty strong. And he's like, shut up, I could take it, right? And they like they get down. Like, uh, Frieza told him like, go down to the planet. You know, we could watch from the ship, right? We got the cameras and stuff, and. Like, Goku was like, all right, you know, they, so they leave through the airlock and they start headed down to the thing. And, like, Vegeta kind of realizes, like, okay, this, this, for somebody to be, like, this, this, this new to the freezer for us, he, he kind of, he, he's too excited for this, right? So, they get down to the planet and Vegeta kind of realizes, like, he, he could barely really stand on this planet. And he's like, how, how high, like, how high is this, this gravity? And he's like, well, Goku, like, he, he's like, he's stretching and shit. He's like, well, as far as I'm aware, it's like too, uh, like, 30 times higher than Earth's gravity, which isn't much compared to, you know, what I'm apparent, what Saiyans are normally used to. So you could probably fare some. And like Frieza, like as Goku's trying to tell like Vegeta what's going on, like what planet, what type of planet they're on. And Frieza like just kind of interrupts him through like Vegeta's scouter and was like, just shut up and fight. Right. And Goku, like he gets in his fighting stance and like Frieza, like not Frieza, uh, Vegeta like just launches at him. And Goku, like, they start fighting. And Vegeta, like, he kind of realized, like, they're on even terms. And then, like, there's no, like, there's no literal way. Like, this dude just got found not too long ago, from what it sounds like. And, like, from when he was moving throughout Frieza's ship initially. There's no possible way that this dude is just, like, stronger than him just off rip. Little does he know, Goku got his ass beat moments before that and unlocked a new form. So, you know, this is why Frieza's laughing. Because he has yet to see, you know, because he know he automatically know what Vegeta's going to end up pulling out. So, you know, after a while, the fight drags on. Vegeta gets pissed. He unlock, he uses his Gallic gun. Goku uses the Command Mail Wave. You know, he gets even more pissed. He turns into a great ape, right? Now, in the midst of him turning into a great ape and using that little sun thing, Frieza turns and looks at Nappa and was like, I swear to God, if you turn into an ape, I'll fucking kill you, right? And, like, Nappa was like, I know how to control myself. Where did that just come from? Worry about him. And he points at Raditz. And Raditz is like, hey, don't look at me. My tail is gone, right? And, like, Frieza looks at Gohan. And Gohan kind of, like, just... He backs away, like, he backs up into a Chi-Chi. Yeah, bro, they kidnapped Chi-Chi. Chi-Chi's on the ship with, like, Frieza and them, you know? But Frieza, kind, like, Chi-Chi kind of fits right in, because if you think about it, Chi-Chi was always a menace. She just didn't have real reasons to be one. Now she kind of has to train and fear to protect Gohan from, you know, everyone on the ship. That's besides the point. So she kind of trains with Zarbon. She's, like, the that's, like, the only other person, like, Frieza kind of told Zarbon, hey, you know, kind of get it right, because technically speaking, there are a lot of people on this. Frieza employs a lot of scumbags, right? So, you know, he'd rather uh, Goku not be upset that somebody didn't try to smuggle his people off the fucking, you know, over to another galaxy or some shit because they, they're rare over there or off to another planet or kill them, you know, because some random shit. Anyway, yeah, so, free, like, she's mildly strong. So, like, yeah, that's besides the point. Anyway, so he turns into a great ape. Vegeta, uh, Goku, like, he's like, whoa, like, so that's like, he kind of also, like, go then, like, Goku comes to the realization that he killed Grandpa Gohan. You know, all the realizations that he would have came to in canon. Right, so you no, know, as Vegeta's like laughing, this is the pinnacle of Saiyan evolution. I behold, like the Super Saiyan, and Goku was like, "Oh, I get why she like why he was laughing earlier, right?" And Goku starts powering up, right? And he just like he keeps charging and keeps charging. Vegeta was like, "You know, what's wrong? Like, you, 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 like you're trying to catch up to me in power, and like you can't. You know, this is the pinnacle of Saiyan strength." And, like he kind of starts seeing like Goku's aura turn a little golden. Okay. That's, that's definitely not it. And Frieza, like, he starts sitting up in his chair, like, can he turn back into it? Like, this was his test originally. He wanted to just see if Goku would turn back into it. But since Vegeta came in being all, that's impossible. He can't be the legendary Super Saiyan. He just threw Vegeta at it, right? 
So, like, as he's charging up, Goku, like, he just barely is able to turn into Super Saiyan. Given, because he just fought, he just fought Frieza twice. Like, he got beat up by Frieza, then he fought Frieza, and now he's going back to fight Vegeta. He had no time to heal in this predicament at all. So after this fight, Goku's going to have a major Zen boost, right? So, yeah, they're fighting, they're fighting. After a while, um, they get this, like, call, like, um, Frieza sees, like, this message from Earth. Now, Goku also sees the message because Goku's not wearing, like, the normal turtle, like, hermit gi. Like, his gi is orange. Like, he still wears the pants, but he has, like, the Frieza for his vest on. Um, you know, some more shit. And he got this little, he got this wrist thing for Capsule Corp. You know, uh, with the confinement to Frieza and uh, Boma's technology, they were able to make, like, this little wrist thing. So, instead of having a scouter, he just has this thing that he's able to, yeah. Anyway, this version of Goku isn't as stupid as the original. I'm not making him as stupid. Anyway. Um, yeah, so, like, it kind of gets his notification saying that, you know, some dude with purple hair is here, and he's kind of, like, you know, telling them, like, they need Goku. It's kind of funny, because they haven't heard, they haven't, you know, really haven't had that many conversations with Goku for years. Like, there's not really, well, yeah, you know, not really much reason for, you know, them to really need him, but, you know, this uh, guy with his purple hair says that they need him. So, you know, yeah, that's basically what happens. They, like, finish up the fight, Goku gets put inside of a healing chamber, and but before he goes in there... You know, Vegeta, obviously, after the fight's finished, Vegeta is completely, like, demoralized. He does not feel like he's, like, the prince of all Saiyans. That shit, you know, kind of blew him. He just saw the Super Saiyan transform right in front of his face and proceed to punch him, like, maybe three or four times right before he passed out. You know, he literally could not take four punches from the Super Saiyan, which is, you know, baffling to him because he always thought he was the strongest. Somewhere off in the distance on a planet called Bumpa, someone sneezes. Um, yeah, anyway... Yeah, um, they start heading back to the planet, and, like, Vegeta's kind of watching Goku, like, heal in the pod. And, like, Frieza walks into the room, and he's like, yes, yeah, magnificent, isn't it? The first Super Saiyan. And, like, like Vegeta kind of scoffs and tries to walk out the room. And, like, Frieza's like, I'm talking to you, boy. Right? Uh, like, free, like this kind of, like, uh, Vegeta's like, what does it matter? Like, you have your, you have your little pet, your little pet saying, and, you know, he's like, just like Burdock was your little pet. And, like, Vegeta, like, Frieza snaps his tail onto the floor and he's like, you won't speak of his name like that. You know he died fighting for your planet, right? Something that you couldn't do. And like, this kind of pisses Vegeta off. And you know, he can't necessarily do anything about it because it's Frieza. So like, like Frieza kind of just works and he's like, if you're mad about it, get stronger and do something about it. But until then, right? And like, he kind of pushes, like not pushes Frieza, not pushes like Vegeta, like completely like hard, but like pushes him out the room. And he's like, stay away from Goku right and like th like he leaves the room too and like the doria and zarbon like kind of walk into the room and like they've been just kind of standing around and like vegeta kind of like tries to walk back in the room after frieza hits the corner and the doria and zarbon like kind of stop him like hey did you not just hear frieza you're not allowed in here not when he's healing you tweaking right so like he kind of stumbles off in the, like in the other direction and then you come across some intel you know oh um they're going to earth and Apparently there's a Namekian there and there's like, you know, you no, know, they were just, you know, he kind of stumbled upon like the little archive of Earth, you know, the whole Dragon Ball thing and all this other stuff. But instead of like, because, you know, they're headed to Earth, instead of going to Earth, he decided to take Nappa and see if he could go to Namek, right? But, you know, what he didn't know was Raditz was going to go tell Nappa something. Because unlike Raditz in Vegeta, Nappa in uh, Raditz's relationship, like friendship is actually pretty decent. Like Nappa kind of got some respect for Raditz because literally raditz did not have it easy like raditz had literally almost the full front of frieza's aggression because he just finished killing burdock and the only other like the only hope that he had to find another another person like burdock was either a vegeta which wasn't a part of his bloodline and b hated him and like two hated him to his very core and raditz which at the time was really weak so when they were training when like frieza did not like what he was doing he would literally just beat him like you know hey Bow, do it better. <laughs> now, now he's on the floor with a broken arm and some more shit because Frieza didn't. You know, anyway, that's besides the point. You know, yeah. So, like, he kind of, like, he kind of tells Frieza, and Frieza's like, "Oh, okay." And like, uh, Frieza kind of just tells, um, like, Boma that he's going to send some, like, some other people out there to deal with their issue. You know, they're strong. They should be able to deal with your issue, right? Well, they go deal with this Vegeta issue on Namek. Or, you know, they should be able to deal with your issue. But Goku's still healing. But Goku wants to go back to Earth. So, you know, technically speaking, I don't think the pod is faster than Frieza's ship. Yeah, so they basically just intercept their pods. Because, like, when they set off for Earth, they set off for Namek. 
So when once uh, Raditz told Frieza, Frieza just basically made their ship do a U-turn and catch their pods on their way there. So literally now, uh, Vegeta and um, Nappa are like kind of not in prison, but like they're on lockdown. Like they're stuck inside their quarters. Like, you know, Frieza don't necessarily want to kill any more Saiyans, but he definitely does not like them enough to just constantly allow them to get away with whatever the fuck they want to. The only reason why they're not in prison prison is because Frieza doesn't have a real prison on his ship. He just normally kills people. So, yeah. Um, that's basically what happens. They get to the plant, discover, like, half of it's taken over by the Red Ribbon Army, and the Frieza forces that were there and the Capsule Corp have kind of combined to make Frieza Corporations. That's, basically, that's what I'm going to call it, Frieza's Corporations. <laughs> yeah, so... um it's called Frieza's Corporations, and yeah, so like, it's like, basically the planet's divided, and half of it's like, controlled by half, like, androids, but that's only because Vegeta, like, uh, given Goku did destroy, like, he did still destroy the Red Ribbon Army, but he wasn't there for, like, the most, like, once Goku left the Red Ribbon Army, instead of, like, Dr. Jiro just finishing off his one or two androids, he just decided, why not make robots, because Goku's not here anymore, and the only other people that he really has to worry about is Piccolo, and, you know, those are only the small few. He can still finish off two original androids. They just won't be as strong because they won't have as much data, right? Plus, Trunks is still there. So they had the, like, early preparation of Trunks. And the Z Fighters are still occasionally around. They're just leading different armies in different parts of the world, which leads to no progression because they're different androids fighting them at different times, right? So when Frieza shit kind of arrives, like, Dr. Zero kind of instantly realizes that he's kind of fucked. Like, because he knows that that's the ship that went to go get, like, the came that got them. Like... But, like, he kind of smirks, like, this could be his chance to really sail, you know, all this other stuff. So, technically speaking, this kind of, like, pushes the Namek arc completely out of the water. Because, in reality, they don't need the Namek arc. But, eh, it's, it's coming. Trust, it's coming. Anyway, yeah. So, basically, they got called because, apparently, the, uh, the Red Ribbon Army just collected the seventh Dragon Ball. And the only, and they're currently, like, beating down the door, um, uh, not beating down the door, but, like, yeah. They found the seven, not collected, they found the seven Dragon Ball and are currently beating down the door of one of the uh, Frieza Corporation's uh, military bases, basically, to get to it. And, you know, like, as soon as Frieza and their forces arrive, they like, you know, let's just get rid of it. So, like, Goku, Raditz, and, like, Goku and Raditz and Darwin and Doria go down there and they basically just dispatch, just dispatch any android that was nearby. Because, you gotta think, Goku just finished going through a whole bunch of, like, healing and all this other shit, so he's pretty stacked. So, like, the only people that really didn't get any real power-ups, well, Raditz got one because he was still getting punched by Frieza when he had the little outburst, but that's besides the point. Like, Goku's pretty fucking strong. Like, Goku went from back of the pack to, like, damn near up to in Frieza's level realm. Like, he's literally in Frieza's levels of strength just because, you know, he had, he was able to get that Super Saiyan, like, a lot. Anyway, yeah, so they, like, they basically locked down that little area, and, like, Frieza, like, finally comes down from the ship, and he's like, so what are we doing? And, like, Boma, like, he, like, he, like, she kind of walks into the room and she's like, I'm glad to see y'all, but, like, we have some really big issues. And this is where I'm in this part off. If y'all enjoyed the video, drop a like. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe. Anyway, this has been Shinobi. Peace.